faith. Uh, All right. <laughs> and that's going to put them on the defensive because, of course, the Bible never says that the Bible is the sole rule of faith. Um, uh, another way of getting at the same question uh, is to say, would well, you believe that the contents of the Bible, the list of books, mm -hmm. the list of the canon, is an article of faith? Now I'm going to give you a little hint here. All right, The Westminster Confession of Faith, which is the standard doctrinal statement for Presbyterianism, propounds a list of books and says these are the canonical scriptures. It proposes them as an article of faith. So I would put the question to them. This list of biblical books that you believe, these 66 books that you call the canon of the Bible, do you think that the list itself is an article of faith? In other words, what is an article of faith? Something that we're bound to believe by divine authority. Are we bound to believe by divine authority that these books, these 66 books, are the canon of Scripture? And if they say yes, then you'll say, okay, well, where is that list articulated in the Bible, in, in divine revelation? Because there isn't a single book of the Bible that lists the books of the Bible. Then I'm going to ask him another question. I hope you're getting these. All right, I'll go back to the podcast if you're not. Another question. All of these have to do with the nature of authority. Ask them, do you, uh, how do you differentiate between dogma, those things that all Christians have to believe, from opinion, those things about which Christians might lawfully disagree? Now, uh, likely your friend is going to come back and say, well, if it's clearly taught in the Bible, we have to believe it, and if it's not, we don't. Okay, well, what about those doctrines that uh, one person thinks are clearly taught and somebody else thinks is not clearly taught? Are those doctrines about which Protestants themselves have traditionally disagreed? What principal way do you have to determine uh, whether or not it's a dogma, whether or not it's something that's worth fighting over, whether or not it's something that's essential to the content of the faith? And they'll probably give you an answer, but it'll be ad hoc. It'll be arbitrary. And it'll boil down to, well, this is what I think. Right. All of these are ways of getting at the fundamental problem of Presbyterianism in, ever, in all Protestant traditions, which is their doctrine of authority is incoherent. Sola Scriptura is not taught in the Bible. The very Bible that they claim to believe in is not taught in the Bible. All right. Their principles of interpretation, how do you actually discern what the Bible says or what it doesn't say, are arbitrary and ad hoc and promote disagreement and not unity. All right. Once you've set them up that way, then I would put this question, or you might even lead with this question. Do you believe that Jesus gave us uh, an authoritative means of handing on the Christian faith? Did, did Jesus himself make provision for handing on the Christian faith in an authoritative way? And I put the emphasis on Jesus, because Presbyterians have a way of understanding the transmission of the Christian faith. They claim that it's through the Bible. But I'm going to throw it back on Christ. Did Jesus give us a means? As soon as you put the question that way, they're going to have to realize Jesus never articulated the principle of sola scriptura. Jesus never listed a canon of biblical books and said, follow these. He never, of course, never even, never even adverted to the New Testament. It hadn't been written yet. Right. Right? Jesus did not set up a, 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 an independent hermeneutical principle for interpreting the Bible. All right. On all of these things, Jesus gives them no instruction at all. But as a Catholic, we know he did make provision for handing on the Christian faith. What is that provision? Matthew 28, Jesus says to the apostles, to the eleven, Go therefore into all nations and make disciples, teaching them everything I have commanded you. So he, all of which was oral tradition, right? He gives them oral tradition, hands it to the eleven, says, Go therefore, make disciples, and I'll be with you to the end of the age. There in the command of Christ, we have the principle of oral tradition, the principle of apostolic authority, and the principle of the indefectibility of the church. The provision that Christ made for handing on the Christian faith was sacred tradition and the teaching authority of the church, including, including the mystery of the sacraments. Do this in memory of me. He never mentions the New Testament. He never mentions uh, the Bible as the sole rule of faith. Okay. And if you, if you will hammer on those questions and those questions alone, all right, then you'll be on very firm footing. Good luck, Susan. We hope that uh, goes well for you. Let's go to Betty in New York.